And uh, thank you, Pastor Greg, for leading us in the presence of God through that uh, meaningful prayer. And for the praise and worship team for also leading us in the presence of God through those beautiful songs. Uh, I would like to welcome a very good friend, Ron Gaff at C. Jenny. Uh, it's my first time to see you today. Uh, I know you have been to the church for several times. Finally, we get to see each other in person. Wala na akong utang, ha? Yeah, uh, we had several uh, talks with Ron online no? while he was in the States. And it's good to be with your mentor. You're my mentor, Ron. Yeah, and of course, you pass your guy. Thank you for your prayer and expression of sympathy. Uh, hindi ko alam ko na, na ibahagi sa lahat, sa lahat ito. In a span of seven days, I lost three loved ones. <clears throat> my uh, brother and my uncle died on the same day, almost at the same time in the morning. <clears throat> Few days after, <clears throat> My stepmom in uh, New Jersey passed away. So <clears throat> it was a uh, tough uh, experience because uh, your brother ko is in, Lo- in, Lo- in Ilocos Sur. It's a nine hour trip by bus. And then I cannot just travel to, Il- travel to Ilocos because I have to attend to the family of my uncle and officiate the. Uh, funeral service, and then I have to travel to Ilocos. Uh, hindi ko napansin na pagod na pala ako. So my adrenaline was really was really high, <clears throat> and it's difficult to to do officiating of your brother and your uncle. <clears throat> uh, but thank you for the prayer that really sustained me. Uh, the grace of God and his strength <coughs> sustained me uh, during those moments. And <clears throat> while in Ilo- Ilocos, coming back to Manila, I lost my voice for several days. I moved my lips, but no voice was coming out. So <clears throat> I thank God before preaching, I, uh, gained, ma- I gained back my voice. <clears throat> Amen to God indeed. And then later, after the me- listening to the message of God, uh, we're going to have a ministry for prayer. We're, we, we will spend time praying for uh, people with uh, health issues. And please include in prayer, <coughs> sorry for sharing this, uh, my dad, 87 years old in uh, New Jersey, uh, he is uh, being treated of stage four. COPD. Uh, just the other day, I was uh, told by my sister to be prepared for any eventuality. Uh, I just have, we just have to trust God uh, for any eventuality that then uh, that will arise. So umagang ito ay uh, <clears throat> maganda yung title ng mensahe ng Panginoon. Uh, Jesus is powerful over our powerlessness, uh, forgives and heals paralyzed men. Uh, interest, as I was uh, reading the passage, uh, I was given three passages to, to, to choose from. One in the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verses 1 to 8. And one, our passage for this morning, Mark chapter 2, verses 1 to 12, and Luke chapter 5, verses 17 to 26. Mga cross-references po ito, but we will uh, be looking at Mark chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. So makikita natin dito uh, yung compassion ni Jesus Christ sa mga taong may pangangailangan. No? 
how he responded to the needs of the people, particularly on the need of the paralyzed man. <clears throat> While uh, studying this, it dawned on me that this person is not a crippled person. He's a paralyzed man. A crippled person can somehow manage to move some parts of his body. Nagsenyas yung daughter ko, thank you. A, a crippled person can manage to move some parts of his body, so he has a good mobility. But for a paralyzed person, if we may uh, refer to the passage this morning, no movement. No movement, that's why he needed four people to trouble him to Jesus. We don't know where they came from, and we were also... Uh, not given some information about the age of the para paralyzed man, but we can see how Jesus attended to his immediate needs. The first point taken from the passage is this. Jesus heals our spiritual sickness. That is found in verses 1 to 5. <clears throat> Babasahin ko yung verses 1 to 5. Ano? A, few days, a few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. So, some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, <coughs> excuse me, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, kung titignan natin si Jesus, he came from a big ministry from different parts of Israel. And Jesus went back to his hometown, Capernaum, that is in Galilee, and <clears throat> sa Sand International, we call it home assignment. Jesus was home assignment after his uh, demanding ministry. S going back to Saint International, after serving for a term in the mission field, Saint Missionaries goes back to his passport country to touch base with his family, friends, sending church, and supporting churches. And during home assignment, missionaries are also required to have rest and recreation before deployment in the mission field for another term. Jesus was on a home service assignment in Capernaum and Galilee. In, in Galilee. Now, ano ang significance ng Capernaum in the life of Jesus? We have heard this several times in the book of the, the Gospels. What is Capernaum to Jesus? What is the significance of the place? Capernaum was a fishing village. So kapag sinabi kong fishing village, meron na kayong mga idea. What transpired in Capernaum? It was a fishing village. And ito, ito yung one of the significant events. It was the place where Jesus chose his disciples, namely Peter, Andrew, and Matthew. It was also a place where Jesus performed many of his miracles, like healing of the servant of a Roman centurion. And of course, this was the place where Jesus healed the paralytic. Yun ang pag-aaralan natin ngayon. 
when uh, even though Jesus was on was on home assignment, he should have rested after coming from a big work. But we can see from the passage that Jesus was fully engaged with the people, meaning he really loved the people. He couldn't turn them. He couldn't turn turn them down. He was fully engaged, physical, uh, physical to attend to their physical and spiritual needs, and it was such an important aspect in the ministry of Jesus. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I would like to show this photo to give you <clears throat> a better idea of the place where Jesus had his sermon with uh, lots of people in the room. At pati daw, if you can go to the passage, pati yung labas, punong puno, no? Large numbers, not hindi lang large number, kundi large numbers of people were present inside the house and outside the house. Every square inch of the house were occupied. Uh, just to give you some description about the building, ito yung uh, the house interior, typical house interior during the time of Jesus. The house is made out of mud brick. Mud brick, they are uh, done on site, meaning there's no prefabricate, uh, prefabricated mud brick during their time. They bring the mud on site and work on it. They do it with mud and hay in rough measurement and rough shape. They just place it on top of each other. And the wall, the walls are not reinforced with steel. Tulad ngayon, di ba? <clears throat> Hindi pwede kang mag-build ng wall na walang corrugated steels inside. Pero ito, uh, in a way, they have a good engineering. Di ba, Ron? <laughs> Civil engineers, Ron. They have a good engineering because that kind of structure <clears throat> can last for, for a long time made of mud brick, and uh, the house is dependent on the brightness of the sun. No electricity, no electrical wirings. They are dependent on the brightness of the sun, and in the evening, <clears throat> kanina hinahanap ko yung uh, oil lamp sa bahay, hindi ko makita eh. I had it when we visited Israel, it was given to us. It's a uh, small lamp, oil lamp with wick. Tama, week. Sa, sino nagsabi ng week? <laughs> week. Yan, uh, yun yung word na hinahanap ko. Week. Sa Tagalog ay mitya. No? Uh, maybe in, in some other occasion. And the house is dependent on, uh, on sun for lightning, uh, lighting. And uh, yeah, in the evening, they use oil lamp. The ceiling, take note of the ceiling. The ceiling is supported with Planks of woods, planks of woods, so that the mud bricks can stay suspended indefinitely. Ang roof deck nila very functional. If you go on top of it, they can dry their grains and they, they can dry their clothes, and uh, maybe that's where they prepare their food and bring it down. Now, while Jesus was preaching in this room. There were large numbers of people in the room, no? fully occupied. Kung na natin sa Mark chapter 2, verse 2, uh, <clears throat> ang sabi dito, they gathered in such <clears throat> large numbers that there was no room left, not even the outside door, and he preached the word to them. So the people in the room and the people outside the room had the benefit of hearing the message of Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus 
was so sensitive to the needs of the people. He knew, he knew without prior announcement, people will come to his place to listen to him and to get ministered to. May mga pangangailangan pang physical, pangangailangan sa kalusugan, maybe material needs as well. Ano ang needs natin ngayon? What needs do you have right now that we can present to Jesus? I like it when Pastor Greg mentioned about Pastor Simbala. We don't make use of the available uh, availability of Jesus in prayer. We don't go to God in prayer and present our needs. Lumalapit lang tayo kapag we are in deep trouble. Why not make it a habit? I'm also speaking to myself. <clears throat> to always be in prayer, <clears throat> even in good times, even in abundance, even in good health. <clears throat> we practice yung sinasabi natin, thankful and grateful heart <clears throat> sa ating Panginoon. Tulad ng nasabi ko kanina, <clears throat> the person, the paralyzed man, was really powerless. Paralyzed. No capacity to move. Just imagine, he needed four people to bring him to Jesus. That speaks of his powerlessness but that didn't prevent them from troubling to Jesus yung desire na paralyzed man naging desire na rin ng apat na kaibigan niya the paralyzed man wanted to get healed of his spiritual and physical crisis that need was transferred to the four friends. That's why they were so motivated to bring this powerless person to Jesus. <clears throat> Sabi sa passage, they troubled. Hindi lang natin alam how they troubled, but they troubled. It must be a very tough journey. But they did the right thing. <clears throat> they went to Jesus to surrender the powerlessness of the paralyzed person and to surrender the helplessness of the four friends. In Mark chapter 2, verse 4, <clears throat> since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and they lowered the mat the man was lying on. They, when they got to the place, sabi nila, oh, oh. there were lots of people. It would be difficult to bring this person in front of Jesus. So again, they strategized to bring this person closer to Jesus. I was just imagining, uh, nag-i-imagine ako while Jesus was preaching, probably dust, debris, and wood, wood particles or wood parts are starting to fall on his head. Kasi sabi dito, they made an opening in the roof above. Above Jesus by digging through it. 
Imagine niyo habang ano, kita ko may nag-iimagine na nakatingin sa ceiling. No? Nagsasalita ako dito, may nahulog sa ulo ko. Dust, debris, and some parts of the wood nahulog sa ulo ko. So baka sabihin ko, pasaglag, hinto mo na natin ito. But that didn't prevent Jesus from preaching at the same time, anticipating for that paralyzed person to come down. Jesus was anticipating for that powerless person to be lowered in front of him. Jesus is anticipating for each one of us to go to him and present our needs. <clears throat> Ang galing, ano? Meron na siyang anticipation bago tayo lumapit sa kanya. <clears throat> Hindi niya sinabi <clears throat> sinabi na ah, uh, when the paralyzed person was finally uh, lowered in front of him, uh, okay, paralyzed man, can you please wait for your turn? I have to finish my preaching and then I'll attend to you. No. Jesus responded immediately to the need of the paralyzed person. He was prompt. <clears throat> he was prompt in attending to the needs to the need of the person. And Jesus is prompt to attend to our needs. And while Jesus was preaching, little by little, the ceiling was getting damaged until the paralyzed person can fit through the ceiling. It was not a small Digging, it was not a small hole because they cannot lower the paralyzed man on standing position. Paralyzed na nga eh. Maawa naman kayo. No? You cannot lower him on a standing position because he was in a vegetative state situation. So they have to lower him on lying position. So kung lying position, ang laking sira nun. At marami rin nahulog sa ulo ni Jesus. But again, the situation didn't bother him. The preaching went on and Jesus attended to that present need. of the paralyzed man. This is a good reminder from, for all of us when we present our needs to Jesus. When we cry out to God, it does not bother him. It pleases him when we run to him and present our needs. Wow. It pleases him when we run to him. It pleases him when we present our needs. Because we are declaring our complete dependence on Jesus. We are telling him, Jesus, we are really helpless. And you're the only person who can help me in my difficult situation. And kung titignan natin yung passage, God is capable, is, He is capable of attending to multiple needs. You present multiple needs to Him, sabay-sabay yan, promptly. He's going to attend to each one of the needs because He is omnipotent. Huwag natin kalilimutan Jesus is omnipotent and our need is always his priority. And this is what happened in Mark chapter 2 verse 5. 
<coughs> Next slide, please. <coughs> when Jesus saw their faith, <coughs> he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. <coughs> Son, your sins are forgiven. <coughs> Finally, when the paralyzed man was lowered in front of Jesus, it was a wonderful face-to-face -face encounter with the greatest healer in the world. Because that was the time that he was waiting for. To experience face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus. Take note again, no? The Preaching was in full swing. No? The preaching was in full swing, and I can just imagine the intensity of that moment. But Jesus paid attention to that powerless person. And healed him with his spiritual crisis. I'm just reminded by our uh, medical checkups with our doctors. Ang ginagawa natin, di ba? Prior to our appointment, we need to check the availability of the doctor through the secretary. Kay Jesus, walang appointment, appointment. Hindi ka dadaan sa secretary, <clears throat> hindi mo na kailangan mag-check Kung choose TTHS ba, available si Jesus, or MWF. Kung MWF, anong time siya available sa clinic? Diba? Those were the usual questions that we ask. Kapag puno, you will not be accommodated even for that week or two. Because the doctor is full. But for Jesus... Walang appointment, appointment. We can go directly to him anytime and anywhere. Saan man tayo naroon, ano man ang kalagayan natin, he would always make himself present for each one of us. Kahit sabay-sabay tayo, I, I would like to quote yung laging sinasabi ni Pastor Greg. Kahit sabay-sabay tayong manalangin sa Diyos, hindi siya malilito. Kahit sabay-sabay tayong manalangin sa Diyos, malinaw ang prayer ng bawat isa, nakakarating ka Jesus. He would always make himself available for each one of us. And after receiving his spiritual healing, now Jesus turned to his physical healing. May idea tayo na this person is in a spiritual crisis also. We don't know much about it. It's up to Jesus to handle his spiritual crisis. Because Jesus dealt with his spiritual condition first before coming to the physical healing. The next point is Jesus heals our physical sickness found in verses 6 to 12. Sa, uh, basahin ko na lang yung verses ng 6 to 12. Now, some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking of themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sin? Sins but God alone. Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. 
uh, imagine ninyo, thinking in their hearts. It's always the issue of the heart. Thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Now Jesus responded, uh, went on to say, which is easier to say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven or get up, take your mat and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. That's the yung part ng deity ni Jesus. That's part of his godly deity. <clears throat> so he said to them, I tell you, get up, uh, take your mat and go home. He got up, no? took his mat and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone and they praised God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. Sa karamdaman ng tao, nabibigyan ng kalwalhatian ang Diyos. They were so amazed and they praised God by saying, we have never seen anything like this. Wala pa kaming naranasan, wala pa kaming nakitang ganitong pangyayari. <clears throat> Maliban dito. Talking about the Pharisees, mga kontrabida to eh. <clears throat> mga <laughs> kontrabida. Uh, cross-reference in Mark chapter 17 <clears throat> para makita natin yung mga pinaggagawa nila. <coughs> One day, this is the cross-reference of our passage uh, this morning. One day, Jesus was teaching and the Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and from Jerusalem. As we look at the passage, makikita natin na the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, they were composed of a big entourage. Because they came from Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. They came from three different places to spy on Jesus. Bira <laughs> Maganda yung coordination nila. They, they planned well, they coordinated well. Coming from different regions in that part of the land. They came not for good intentions, but to spy on Jesus. Of course, you wouldn't see them associated with the citizens or the people because they would always be in their self-righteous stance. They don't want to get associated with the people of Israel. But they witnessed how things happened. <clears throat> when I was pondering on the word witness, that could mean uh, seeing a blow-by-blow blow account in full details from the start to the end. Yun ang witness. You saw everything. These people, the Pharisees, they saw everything. <clears throat> the blow-by-blow blow account in full details how everything transpired. And yet, yun nagbubulungan sila na tignan mo tong si Jesus. Nagpapatawad na may kasalanan. Talagang lapastangan siya. Sabi naman niya, oo nga, tama ka dyan. Ang kontrabido talaga. No? So yun lang ang trabaho nila. To spy, to find fault, to murmur, to gossip on Jesus. In short, they, are really, they, are, they were not needed in that crowd. Pero nakita natin, Jesus dealt with them sharply. 
Jesus dealt with them to their face by exposing what they have in their hearts. So nakita nila yung part ni Jesus, yung being a deity, he can read your minds. As an application, he, since he can read your minds, he know what's your condition right now. And there is an anticipation tulad kanina, he was already anticipating for that paralyzed man to come in front of him. So meron anticipation si Jesus that each one of us will run to him, cry to him, <clears throat> and present our needs. The spiritual crisis uh, was addressed. Now the physical crisis was addressed. The powerless man finally got he wanted with that wonderful face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus. He received a spiritual healing. Now, he received physical healing. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of the people. Full view meaning all the people present, including the Pharisees and the Lord, uh, teachers of the law, witnessed the miracles. In full view. Through the years, as uh, I was, I am, as I navigate my Christian walk, I realized and I learned, I learned that God has different ways of answering our prayer. He can answer according to our prayer request. Example, uh, he gives absolute healing to his people. And all of us have witnessed this kind of miracle of healing. Some of us even experience uh, healing either through medical procedures or healing without medical interventions. You receive that healing. Means there's another kind of answer when we plead for our health. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, where, next slide please. Yeah. 2 Corinthians, yeah. Chapter 12, verses 8 to 10, referring to Apostle Paul. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast, boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That's why, for Christ's sake, I like this. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Alam natin, no? He pleaded three times for the thorn of the flesh. Hindi natin alam, no? Kung ano yung thorn of the flesh. But he pleaded three times to the Lord for the healing. Alam natin si Paul, si Apostle Paul, he was a person with uh, tough, personality, he can survive all kinds of threats, matiisin si Paul. But for him to plead himself to the Lord for three times, it must be serious. It must be something serious or something that caused him 
a lot of discomfort for him to plead not only once but three times. And we know the thorn in the flesh was not taken away from him. God gave him a different kind of healing. A kind of healing according to God's term. And God said to Paul, Paul, uh, ito ang panalangin mo. You pleaded for three times. Ito ang kasagutan ko sa kahilingan mo. <clears throat> Hindi ko tatanggalin yung thorn of the flesh. Ang bigat, ano? Kasi kapag sinabing healing, there should be an absence of any kind of sickness. That's the human understanding of healing. <clears throat> absence of sickness in the body. <clears throat> Pero sabi ng Panginoon, Panginoon kay Apostle Pablo, Paul, ito ang kasagutan ko. <clears throat> ito ang healing in my own terms. And then, Paul surrendered himself to the Lord. <clears throat> Because he surrendered himself to the Lord, nasabi niya ito. I'll just repeat what's in the verse. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. Habang nasa kanya yung thorn of the flesh, the power of God will always, will always be present in his life. More gladly about my weaknesses. Yung gladly, parang napakahirap nun. You have the thorn on the, in the flesh and gladly about his weaknesses. So that Christ napakaganda nung sinabi, so that Christ's power may rest on me. People will see the power in his life because of his condition. The sickness was not taken away, but every time they look at Paul, they see the glory of God and the power of God. <clears throat> Some sickness may linger indefinitely, but God's unique kind of healing will always be there. According to Paul, his grace will always be there, present and abundant. Nabanggit ko na ito in my previous preaching. If I may repeat myself again, It is in this kind of situation where you experience God's daily grace. It is in this kind of situ situation where you experience God's daily mercy. And it is in this kind of situation where you experience God's daily miracle. In this kind of difficult situation. Let us close in a word of prayer. And then Pastor Greg will lead us uh, in prayer as we pray for those people na meron mga physical needs and health issues. Let us go to God in prayer.